Well, good morning, wieners. What is cranking? A new day, a new video for you guys. A video that I think a lot of you guys have been asking for is the one that I'm about to film right now. And that being uh, a somewhat in-depth review of the new Kayax. When I started my channel way long ago, back in the early 2000s, I uh, did most of my fishing either from the bank or a kayak. So even though I've got this giant bass boat, which I love by the way, I am always gonna be a bank angler and a kayak angler at heart. And just recently, I was sent two brand new kayaks by this dude right here, the kayak plug. His handle fits so well just because he's always hooking it up fatty with some new yaks. Uh, he's the same dude that gave us the Bonafide 127s before we set out for the Devil's River series. If you guys haven't checked out those videos, um, I'll leave it down in the description below. That's kind of where we first broke in the axe. But he hit up Alex and I, I think it was like, I don't know, a month ago, and was like, yo, got some new tools for you guys to try. Uh, they're not Bonafides, and they're probably like nothing you've ever used before, and that is these two beautiful beauties right here. And in today's video, I'm gonna break down my thoughts and opinions, honest opinions, and give you guys some insight on what I think about uh, these specific type of kayaks compared to like your ordinary ones, like a, like a Bonafide that is just basically you paddling, there's no pedal drive or trolling motor. Also, before we get today's video kicked off, I wanna say huge thank you to today's sponsor. That being the folks over at Mystery Tackle Box. If you guys wanna sign up today, be sure to use my code right here and get your first box for as low as $10. It is a great quarantine gift right now. If you've got a fishing buddy you haven't seen in quite some time, Send them a box of baits. It's not only a perfect way to get introed into fishing, whether you be a saltwater or freshwater angler, but it's also just a killer gift to anyone that you want to share the love of the outdoors and fishing to. Here is what I received in this April's box. You might see some familiar lures in there as well. But I just want to say thank you. Much love from the folks over at Mystery Taco Box for sending me a box and sponsoring today's video. Show some love back. Check out the website. I'll leave a link down below. And again, don't forget to use the code. Get your first box for as low as 10 Okay, without further ado, folks, let's get one of these big beauties off the trailer and start breaking it down for you. So, let's get on with the review. The actual kayak is a Slayer Propel 12 Max. It's kind of a mouthful. When fully rigged, this thing weighs 125 pounds. It is a bit of a pig, but it's battle ready. It's meant for fishing. This is a fishing kayak, period. I'm just gonna kind of go over some of the main specs, start from the bow and then end of the stern. First and foremost, you got these really meaty handles on here, which actually have a bit of track in there, so you could make these uh, a bit customizable, although there's not a whole lot of track room there. I mean, you could put maybe like a, a GoPro mount or I don't really know, like a cleat mount up here, but these handles are super sturdy, way sturdier than my Bonafide 127. By the way, I'm mainly basing this review off of only like three trips. I have not taken it on huge floats yet, like the Devil's River, and I really haven't taken it on any big, like just keep in mind, the only times I've used this have been on a pond or a small creek, whereas when I did the Bonafide review, it was uh, after kind of a big send. But anyway, let's just continue. I'm blabbering too much. Okay, handle really sturdy. I love that. Uh, then you've got this front compartment, which I'm a little disappointed by only because well, there just isn't a whole lot of room. One thing I loved about the Bonafide 127 is the fact that it was hollowed out. Essentially, you could fit just about anything and everything within the hull of the kayak. Whereas this is uh, kind of like a roto mold, uh, which is good for a couple of reasons, I suppose. One of which is nothing's gonna be moving around. You know where everything's at. There's actually a space right here for your battery. I believe it's one of these. And there's also a small slot to um, install a transducer, a side scan head or just a regular down imaging head, which is pretty useful. And that wasn't a tool that uh, came with the Bonafide. But again, there's just not a whole lot of room. I believe, oh, maybe you can move. Hang on, you might be able to remove this. Okay, so I kind of stand corrected, but still it's, I mean, yeah, you've got this in the way. So you can fit a little bit more stuff in here, but for the most part, you're limited to this uh, molded tray. And then I guess this is probably where your, your battery would go. Any sort of loose transducer cord would just go right here. To fit the transducer in here, you just, unscrew these two screws, put your um, your side scan uh, transducer, and it just fits flush within the hull of the kayak. So that way when you're running skinny water, you're not gonna risk uh, you know scraping your deucer on heavy rocks or brush, which is a really awesome design. With these kayaks, it's all about sacrifice. Like, you get one thing and then you kinda lose another, and then when you lose another, you get one thing. But I'd have to say that was kind of my first complaint with this kayak, because there just isn't a whole lot of room in the front. If I'm doing like four day camping trips, I need this thing to be like, not only fishable, but also livable. And that was one great thing about the 127. I could fit my tent, all my 
bags in there and with this it's gonna be a little more challenging but not the end of the world moving on to this crazy thing right here take a look at this you may notice that this is something that did not come with my last kayak this is what makes this tool unique this unit this uh, this native unit what you see here is a pedal drive by what is it, Propel, which I believe is a separate company to Native. I could be wrong on that, but this is sweet for a couple of reasons, one of which it takes out the equation of paddling. So you're no longer having to like fight the wind or the current. You can basically use your feet and uh, use this crazy powerful pedal drive to get you to where you need to go. Now, again, there is a bit of a downside with this. I mostly fish a lot of skinny water rivers and creeks here in Texas. You just don't need this. You don't really need it for that kind of super skinny water uh, fishing operations. So while I think this is amazing when I'm trying to get from one spot to another, like in a deep pool. It, it kind of does get in the way when I run up on like basically a riffle where it's essentially two inches. I'm not gonna downplay this thing, it's awesome, but it is bulky and when I'm not using it, it is definitely like overcrowding the whole situation, but it's it's damn powerful. I used it the other day on a pond and you just rip. I mean, you're going like, what feels like 15 miles per hour. I don't know the actual speed that you can get up to in this <laughs> with this pedal drive, but it's very fast. The other downside too is it just doesn't handle very well through grass. It's not like a trolling motor. Don't expect it to just rip through hydrilla. It's gonna get hung up quite a lot. But the overall design is like super seamless. I like, I love how it just, when you need to put it up, you can put it up very easily. It's on kind of like this, this uh, swivel bracket right here. So I can just put it up like that. And then to put it down, you just remove this center console piece, which is strapped down. Pull that up. There you go. You just drop it down. And the nice thing is it is removable. You can just pull these tabs aside and then remove the whole pedal drive apparatus. Yeah, I mean, you're not like stuck. Like if you wanted to go back and forth, what, like I was saying, if you wanted to fish a big lake one day and then go run some skinny creeks the next, it's not the end of the world. It's gonna take some time to get used to. It's, it's a little bit different, but I, I do dig it. Okay, moving on to the seat. There's one thing I loved about my Bonafide and there's one thing I love about this Native is the fact that the seats are so comfortable. I fished out of many kayaks in the past, some cheap, some expensive, and the seats that they put on these Bonafide and Natives are insane. Like I'm six foot one, kind of lanky and tall. Like I do have kind of some back strains from sitting on the boat all day and just fishing in general, but this keeps you very comfortable. They're very sturdy. And these ones in the native actually lock down. You can screw lock them in so that if, you know, your kayak flips over, if you're on the highway or something like that and don't want to take the, the seat out, you don't have to. You don't risk losing the seat on an adventure, which I think is awesome because the seat would have occasionally fall out on the Bonafide. But this this Jimmy's locked down. She's going nowhere. Uh, you're just like up tall. Like I like being kind of up and, and, and looking down to the water, especially if I'm trying to sight fish in, in clearer spots and clearer rivers. It's a deadly seat. It keeps you positioned at a nice fishing height. Okay, so to the right of your seat, you've got uh, your steering lever. This little unit steers your rudder, which is integrated in the back. I don't know if you can see that right there. It's probably too dark, but that right there is the rudder, which is very seamlessly built into the whole rig. I definitely need to get used to this little thing right here. Again, I'm so used to just paddling uh, when it comes to kayak fishing. So working the rudder and then also trying to get to where I'm going and making a cast at the same time is a little bit confusing for me, but I think I will get the hang of it. I don't love it right now, but I'm sure once I have it dialed in, um, it's all I want to do pretty much use the pedal drive in this little rudder. But this is your steering. This is what you use to steer. The pedal drive doesn't actually steer you. You can go in reverse and forward. When it comes to going left to right, you have to use this little steering lever, which controls the rudder, which I've said 50 times. Do you get the point? Rudder steering wheel pedal drive nice <laughs> okay moving to the back you've got some items that did not come with the kayak but uh, that I just put in extra I included this little cup holder which I kind of use for some of my loose lures that I, I just don't want lying around the boat um, or the kayak this is a kayak in case you're wondering not a boat <laughs> then right here I've got this uh, I believe this is made by yak attack this is just a, a storage for tackle trays it's looking a little messy right now because I had to pull some stuff out but yeah this is really nice within the actual tackle tray the tackle box it comes with three rod holders as well and so in total I've got five spots to put my rods in uh, one two three and the native comes with two extra holes right here actually matter of fact it might even come with three let me see yeah, that's another place to put your rods. So you could technically fit six rods in this kayak if you were to use some sort of uh, box system. But as is, you can only fit uh, three rods seamlessly, which is pretty dank. Over here, I've got a waterproof storage spot. Um, I can put my, I guess, like my cell phone or my wallet. The only issue is if I do put any like valuables here that I don't want to get wet, they're like all the way in the back, like not a very accessible spot. Usually with something like this, you'd find it up here, but I'm assuming the reason why they allocated that spot back there is because you've got the pedal drive, which takes up so much space 
in this kayak. No big deal, that's pretty cool. Uh, just kind of an odd spot for uh, waterproof storage. Then also you've got two more of these extremely heavy duty handles, which again, I love, which are also integrated track mounts. So I could put some sort of, you know, kayak accessory on this. Just kind of a nice little touch, to be honest. Then moving over to the uh, starboard side of the yak. You've got a place to put your paddle, which you 100% will always need. In my opinion, just because you have this sweet little sexy pedal drive deal, doesn't mean that you can just leave the paddle at home. I found myself having to go back and forth, especially when I get in kind of a jam or the current was kind of getting weird. Having a nice little secure spot for the paddle on this kayak is awesome. I'm glad they did that. They didn't just completely forget about the fact that you need a paddle. And the paddle I'm using right here is just a bending branches. Uh, some some little dope super light paddle. I love this thing. This is very comfortable and I use it as a push pole if I'm fishing super shallow stuff. Back here I've also got a net which I don't really like using that much but if I have a sticky situation where a uh, fish is tangled up in the trees or some brush definitely pull that thing out. And here's another cool thing I forgot to mention this about the seat. Check this out. There's actually a little place to store your tools that is designed within the seat as well just like a bass boat or something like that. I mean again this is a fishing kayak. It is designated for hardcore fishing or people who are strictly fishing out of a uh, out of a vessel like this and it just excites me to see like the designer take note of the fact that you know anglers need certain elements within their yak in order to have like a successful and also comfortable day on the water but anyway i feel like i've covered most of what i need to on the native if you guys have any questions drop a comment right now in the comment section below just let me know what you think of this kayak um, and how it compares to my previous one which is the bonafide 127. one last thing i want to show you guys before we close out today's video starting with this little shallow water anchor. This is a micro power pole. I've heard a lot of good things about these little devices. It's crazy how it works. I don't even understand it. And I can't even wrap my head around it. You take this and you mount it back here. And when you're in a sticky situation where you need to stop the kayak or if it's windy, you can press a button twice and a power pole will drop and it will essentially anchor you from going any further. So if you're in current, tons of wind, or if you just wanna stop and fish an area, you basically just press two buttons and then you're locked into place. It is an insane concept. I remember when they first came out with power poles for boats, that was crazy. And then they announced that they were doing these micro power poles for kayaks and smaller rigs. And I was like, this is, this is, this is how you're defying science. This doesn't make sense. It's like sorcery. But anyway, I had to get one. So I'm eventually gonna mount that on the back. Also went with just uh, an extra battery pack too so the cool thing is you don't have to hook these these damn things up to um, a 12 volt battery you can just charge one of these hook it to the back and you're good to go uh, the other thing that I'm going to add uh, next to the seat is this little HDS 9 unit very overkill like I'm talking big time overkill but I bought this unit a long time ago for my old low and uh, I just never got a chance to use it and I don't want it to go to waste but uh, I figured it'd be awesome to mount on this here native because it is a bigger kayak and it definitely seems like it would be more you know fitting to put uh, an HGS 9 on something that is this big and juicy and meant for for bass vision for a lot of big bass fishing it comes with a side scan transducer so I'll be able to side scan with this kayak which is gonna be ridiculous be like next level sh and with that I'm going to uh, hook it up to this little little battery deal right here which again it, I don't really know how to use but I'll figure it out and then here's the mount for the HDS 9 so basically like three additions to the kayak right off the bat we haven't really splashed the thing too much yet but there's a few trips that I want to take this on and I may even bring this yak up to Maine and float some of the rivers that have brook trout big smallmouth musky pike I mean there's so much water there's so much running water spots that would be perfect for this yak up north but we are going to give her a few uh, hours here in Texas before we shoot up on a northern send. I hope you found this uh, slight review interesting. We're gonna do another review after all these bells and whistles are installed. And I will give you guys my updated thoughts, opinions, uh, comments uh, about this thing because it is so new. It's not, as you can tell, dirty enough. It needs to be dirtier. Um, that, in my opinion, really shows that I've been using the Yak and a Yak really gets some use. Anyway, like I said, drop a comment. If you have any questions, be sure to subscribe, like the video, and let me know if you wanna see some more Yak videos in the future. I am very down to do so. You just say the word and we'll make it happen. Anyway, folks, I'm peacing out, signing out. Thank you so much for watching today's video. And as always, folks, keep fishing. Never stop.